Hello there, my name's Sam and today we're going to do a little informational video discussing a topic that so many simmers in the Sims 2 world know very well. Tracking sheets. Whether you are newer to the Sims 2 world or a veteran, you may find the concept of tracker sheets a bit overwhelming. To summarize, for those less familiar, a tracker sheet or rotational gameplay is meant to help list out all the households in a neighborhood. Each sim will have a list of personal info, such as their aspirations, their lifetime career, gender preference, degree, zodiac, etc. The idea behind this is to be able to keep tabs on who is in your hood and make sure they are all being played equally Per the rules of rotational play. For a very long time, players have used various spreadsheet programs such as Excel or Google Sheets to create these trackers. However, I have been using a different program for my trackers and I have received a lot of questions from viewers about how to set these trackers up. The program I use is called Notion. It is a really cool free app that offers a ton of options and is a lot more flexible than a traditional Excel tracker sheet. So first you may wonder, why would you want to spend time transferring tons of info from your old sheet to this program? Well, you might not, <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> uh, but, but it could be a fun way to try something new when you're setting up a new hood. Here is my current tracking sheet for early Strange Town that I have been playing on my Twitch channel. There are a few notable features that have made me want to stay with this app that I'm going to use this this tracker as an example to share. So as you might see, I have all of the households listed here, but you don't really see the information that's in those households. This program has the ability to have this toggle feature so I can drop down and now I can see everybody within this household, which is a really great way to keep things organized. Uh, I'm able to do that and keep things kind of compact and not too overwhelming if I'm trying to just a lot of times I'll just leave. See, I have in progress here. This is the current household we were working on. Um, I might just leave it open. It's kind of a nice way to keep just things simple and clean looking. Um, another really, really big feature. I think a lot of people uh, when they see me using this tracker, um, I'll often kind of show it on stream while we're playing. They really are intrigued by these tags. So this is this little colored square here where it has the, the word in it. So I can click on this and I have all these pre-saved tags for this section. So like, for example, let's say Luke Vandermorgan here ages up to child. Boop. Now he's a kid. Oh, somebody, you know, they age up. I have I have gender preferences usually for like the kids I'll put not applicable. So I can go through and just have that noted. I don't have to write it out or anything. I can just select it. Same with aspiration. I've got all theirs. The aspiration category I have something called a multi select option. Um, so I can select multiple tags. All of this I'll talk about how to set up in a moment. Just as an idea of what like Notion offers for a tracker like this. Another thing I really enjoy is the ability to grab a whole row and take it somewhere else. I can drag it. So if somebody moves out of one household, right? Like what do we have here? We've got we've got the, the curious sisses. What if we uh let's say uh Glabe and Marilena get broken up and they want to go she moves into the singles household. I can open up this one. We can take Marilena, and we're gonna drop her over here. Now she's over here. Or I can hit Control Z and boom, she pops back down here. So I really like that. So next we're gonna talk about the installation and the setup of a tracker of this type. So after you create a Notion account, you can then choose how you want to download this. And there is there is iOS and Android, Mac and Windows, or Web Clipper. So you have a different, couple different options depending on how you want to to use it. You can use it right in the in the browser, or you can actually get the Windows app. I usually use the actual Windows app. Um, I also have the iOS app on my phone, so I can access it from there too. Okay, now that we have set up our fresh new Notion, we are gonna want to start a fresh page. This is going to be the base of our tracker. I would suggest not making your tracker in the initial starting home page that you end up with uh, so you can more easily have multiple trackers and everything. So you're going to want to go up to the top left here. Now there, this little bar here sometimes is, is pinned open here or if it's not, there the, there's like a toggle button here. It'll just be the three lines and you can click it and open it or you can just mouse over and select. 
Um, and you're going to want to look for new page right here. Usually it's right on this first bunch. Uh, we're going to hit new page. We're going to get this pop up and we're going to give it a little title. But we're just, let's say town name. Then we have options for how we want to set this up. But what we're going to want for the tracker is to go right down here where it says table. It says under the add new section. We have all these options. I can go to table and it, it has now created a new table for us. We do have the option to select a data source. I have all these options because of all these different trackers. We're not doing that. We're going to hit new database right down here. We'll hit new and there we go. So now we have a fresh new page that we can do whatever we want with. So now that we have the foundation of our tracker here, we're going to want to start adding in all of our categories, all of our columns that we can fill our Sims info into. So let's start with creating a header for our tracker. So we're going to want to add a description along the top here. You have some options. You can add a cover. I like to have a cover as well. So all you have to do is click that and then you can, um, if you hit change cover, you can upload like a screenshot or something here. We'll Let's see, what are we going to have for our cover? And I can reposition it. Ah, there we go, Mr. Herboldy. Very good. And then we can also add a description. We can add an icon too, which I do like to do sometimes, which just shows up here. It kind of looks cute on along the uh, along the side of like your listing of, of pages. And then in the description, I like to put, sometimes I'll put like now playing round one or something along those lines just as a note. Uh, sometimes I like to make notes about rounds are seven days and of course all you have to do is highlight something and then you can adjust some of the the text settings. I can do bold, we can make it colorful. Here let's make that a blue, we'll make a nice blue or how about a nice red and then sometimes I also have important links like if I use a randomizer wheel so all you have to do to do that would be to highlight some text and then there is a link button and then you can just paste your link and you hit enter. So after that is done, we can jump into the columns where the sim info is actually going to be. But first, let's break down the different column types and how to set them up. The the main columns that I use, I have listed out here. It's the uh, this is the tag select column. This is a name column which comes preset into every database table. This is a text column and you can notice each of these have a little icon next to them that helps identify the type of column. So you can change the actual title of the column by clicking on it and filling in this information and it changes that. But this little icon stays the same to let you know the actual variety of the column. Um, another important one that I use is the multi select. And these two are an extra thing that we're going to talk about in a second because I actually hide these. So in order to actually add a new column, we're going to hit this plus button here and then this option will pop up and then we're going to be able to choose the type. And again, you'll see these icons. So we want say we want another text column where we can write stuff in. And now we have this fresh text column that's ready to go. Pretty simple. That's pretty much the basics. You can choose any of these. Um, you are also able to change the type of an existing column by clicking on it and hitting edit and then you can go in here and select type and then you're able to change it so i want to say i want to change this to a select column boom you can see the little icon changes there so it's now a little select column so that's kind of the basics of that the other main important thing that's related to these two items is setting up those toggle buttons setting up those little toggles that are going to be able to let us have a more organized tracker and hiding all the details of each household so we're going to go to these these three little dots over here, the little edit, and then we're going to go down to sub items. Once you're under the sub items, you'll see this big blue button that says turn on sub items. So we'll say yes, and it'll pop up these two headers, these two uh, columns. It's not really that important because I hide these. I don't like seeing these. I think they look kind of messy. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to hide these. So if all you have to do is click on the the column title and then hide in view right here it's got like a little eye with a slash through it i'm gonna hide it technically it's still there but it's not being shown and that's fine it doesn't bother it at all that's the basics of that uh let's do some specifics now here are some of the things i do like to add and some notes on the best way to handle it in this program so the very first thing i like to have is the round status so usually I'll change the title to round and then with because this is a select column, a column type that the, the program calls select, I call it a tag column. 
because what it is is it's not a regular writing column. It, it Everything that you write in this column creates a reselectable tag. So see, I have round one written in here. Let's say, for example, that my rounds for this particular hood that I'm playing are going to be counted by season. So I'm keeping track of what season each household is in. So let's put spring. I can then see it says create. So if I hit select, it brings up spring. But then if I want to have the next household in spring, all I have to do is click the, click that tag each time. So I can have everybody everybody in spring. Uh, the next one I usually do is the actual household name. So I enter the, just the title as household. And this is considered like the title column and it doesn't let you get rid of this, which is a little annoying. So unfortunately, because of the way that this one functions, it doesn't really let you do much with the formatting. Sometimes I will move, I'll swap things around and do a here. Let me, I'll put a text here for the household name just because I'm kind of fussy about the actual formatting and the way it looks. So now when I select this, all of these options pop up. I can do, I can make it bold. I can make it, we'll make it green. But so sometimes I use just a regular text column for this rather than that default title column and I drag the co title column over here. Um, like I said, the downside is you can never seem to get rid of this title column. Um, sometimes I'll just drag it to the very end of my tracker if I don't want to use it at all. So now, because we're doing a toggle column, a drop down column, when you mouse over the sides of these, these uh, rows, you'll see this little arrow. And when you click it, it brings this drop down and you'll see add new sub item. So all of the all of the rows that are going to have our Sims name in them are considered sub items. So when we select that, it gives us a row. But then once we once we close this, that row is going to be hidden. So it's considered as being kind of under this section. And now that we have something actually in this section, that arrow is going to permanently show up, whereas these it's kind of only shows up when you mouse over. So it indicates there's actually something in there. So after we have that set up, we've got our extra column here. We can have the sim name in here. You can just use this column for sim name if you don't care about the fact that you cannot format the the writing in these sections, which means you can't change the boldness or the um, like whether it's italicized or whatever. Uh, what I'll do oftentimes is I drag this title column all the way to the end. I then make a new text column and I put that here. So we're gonna name this this column sim name or maybe just sims. We could do, we're gonna name it sims and then we'll be able to put our sims name. Let's, let's name him uh, Johnny Smith. I like to add the sims full name here, even though I have technically their last name here because some household names don't actually represent all of my sims last names. Like Johnny might have himself a girlfriend. All I have to do is hit this plus button on the end here and it adds another another row within this toggle. So I can then add, let's uh, let's say his, his girlfriend is Betty Boop. We have, we have Johnny Smith and Betty Boop, so I'm able to make note of her actual last name and uh, that she's not a Smith, maybe not yet at least. Um, one other thing and reason that I like to use a text column here, so I can write little notes along this. A lot of times I like to make them like a gray color, so they're just like a little bit more subtle. Like I can say, uh, let's say I want to put, remind myself that I wanted them to adopt a baby or something. We're going to italicize it, make it gray. And then when I have this closed, it still shows this little note that can be, you know, important information for when I'm down playing somebody else. I can say, oh yeah, that's right. So that's useful. That's why I like to have that text column rather than the title column, but you can do the title column also. The ne next thing I like to do is have an age column and I use the single select tag option, the same as we did for the rounds. So let's do age. We'll title it age. And then I can, uh, I, all I have to do is a, type in what I want the tag to be. So we have adult and then Betty Boop is also an adult. So again, we can just like we did with the, the spring, we can just select adult. And a lot of times with these, I like to have them more subtle. So I'll ch change them to like a gray color. And there we go. And it changes hers also because they're both the same tag. The next thing I like to do, we're going to add a multi-select option for this next column. We're going to drag it over next to our age. I usually put like sim type 
or occult type or something along that line. Sometimes I'll just write type because I kind of know what it means. And this is where I put if my sim is like a human, I put human, hit enter, it creates that. And then let's say Betty Boop is a vampire. That's why I want these in here so I can keep track of who is an occult sim and who is not. Um, and the reason I have it as a multi-select is because I use mods that allow multiple, uh, multiple occult types to exist in the same sim. So let's say Betty's a vampire and a plant sim. So she's got both. She's got double. She's got a, first of all, that's a nightmare life that Betty's living. Betty's in, Betty's in hell, a vampire plant sim. But also we now can remember that she's got both of those going on. <laughs> so, but that's pretty much it. I think we, uh, we've pretty well covered it. At that point, you can just keep adding. Again, you have to either add within this sub item. And again, once we close it, we can hide everything. And if we want to start the, this next one, this next uh, title, we just open it right up again. We give us our, our uh, household name, and then we hit the sub item, and we keep going, and we start filling out our stuff, just like we did before. We type in their name and just kind of go right on down. And we could just boom, 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 all the way down the list, and just keep keep on going throughout all your, all your hood, the whole darn hood. And eventually you'll end up with a whole full system like this, where everybody's all organized. And as you can see, I have this, that title column down here, just blank. Just because it annoys me and I don't like it. Uh, I hope that was helpful for those that are looking to get into Notion. I've had a few folks tell me that it was a little bit confusing to try and start, and I understand that. Uh, let me know if there was anything maybe I didn't cover. I can try and answer as much as I can in the uh, comments. But I guess that's it for now. And have a good rest of your day or night. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.